Are you a superstitious person? Do you avoid black cats, make sure not to walk underneath ladders, and if a building happens to have a 13th floor, you do everything you can to avoid it? Well, if that's the case, then on April the 13th, which happens to be a Friday the 13th as well, I'm not kidding, in 2029, you might want to bury yourself in the deepest bunker you can find, because this is when Earth is going to be making a close approach, or rather, a large asteroid is going to be making a close approach with our planet. The closest approach that any sizable asteroid has made with our planet in recorded history, at least as far as we know. Now, I've talked about this topic a number of times on this channel, but I've picked up probably about 100,000 subscribers since I discussed it the last time. And given the importance of this topic, I think it's important that we talk about it again. Now, NASA will tell us, and most astronomers will also tell us, that there is no threat whatsoever, that even though Apophis is going to be coming uncomfortably close during this time period. This is actually an extremely good opportunity for us to get a really good look at a near-Earth object asteroid. There is nothing to fear. It's just going to be a great opportunity for both professional and amateur astronomers on that night. And they're probably right. However, it is irresponsible, I've always felt anyway, that it's irresponsible for us to completely write off the possibility of an Apophis impact. It is coming so ridiculously close to our planet. We're talking inside the orbit of our geosynchronous satellites, much, much closer than the moon, that even a tiny change to its trajectory, a minor little variation in its course could put it right back on a collision course with our planet, a collision that would be utterly cataclysmic, not on the level of a dinosaur extinction kind of event, but nevertheless, the most powerful explosion that our species will have experienced, at least in recorded history, more powerful than any volcanic eruption, even the most powerful ones like Krakatoa. And if it were to happen to hit somewhere inconvenient, like a populated area or even worse, an ocean, this could be a very bad day for millions of Earth's inhabitants. Good morning and welcome to another special Angry Bulletin talking about asteroids this time, a topic I haven't talked about a great deal on this channel for the last year or so, mostly because of the whole Three Eye Atlas thing. It's done its best to, uh, to interfere with a lot of my other topics just because it continues to do such amazing things. But again, as the title of this video suggests, there's a lot more reason to be concerned about Apophis than there is about 3i atlas even though 3i atlas is much bigger than apophis and traveling at a higher velocity and were it to impact impact our planet it would definitely be an extinction level event something that would almost certainly destroy our civilization if not our entire species 3i atlas has never come closer than hundreds of millions of kilometers away from our planet it's never come close enough to present any kind of serious threat and would have had to have executed a very significant artificial orbit of the sun an oberth maneuver if you will to have put it on a collision course i never felt that that was a real serious threat i made one video talking about what might happen if an impact did transpire but overall 3i atlas even if it is an artificial object and i still maintain that it might be here by design it never did anything to suggest that it might collide with earth but apophis is a different matter this is an object that is not under artificial or intelligent control it is in the grip 
of uncaring factors like momentum and Newtonian physics and gravity. And all of those things could care less about what happens to humanity in the future. And at some point, those very forces are going to put a dangerous asteroid on a collision course with our planet, even if Apophis is not one of them. But still, what if the worst were to transpire? What if NASA is somehow a little bit wrong with their calculations? Or if Apophis due to some sort of unforeseen incident, diverts on its course just a little bit, going from a relatively safe trajectory that it seems to be on now, close but safe, to a cataclysmic collision course. What would the consequences be to our planet if Apophis were to hit? Now, if you ask any AI application to look up an Apophis impact consequence scenario, it's always going to tell you that it's not an extinction level event, that it would create regional damage, but nothing worldwide. However, nothing can really give you a proper appreciation for how big this thing actually is unless you look at it compared to some pretty recognizable landmarks. Apophis is utterly man. Massive. We're talking easily the height of the Empire State Building, but far denser. Apophis is a nickel iron asteroid, the heaviest and most dense type of asteroid there is. It weighs up to 60 million tons. And an impact with an object like this, traveling tens of thousands of kilometers per hour, will be utterly cataclysmic. We're going to go ahead and pull up my favorite asteroid impact simulator to give you an idea of just how bad this would really be especially if it hit an inhabited area not in the middle of london but let's just say in the middle of southern england that will be bad enough okay so all the parameters established god Boom! The most powerful explosion by far in human history, leaving a massive crater 4.3 miles or about 7 kilometers wide and an explosion on the order of 4 gigatons of TNT. Not megatons, gigatons. This is a quarter of a million Hiroshima blasts, more power than all of humanity's nuclear weapons combined. And then look at the fireball. It utterly consumes most of southeastern England. Just a devastating fireball and the human toll is utterly terrifying. Based on the population of this region, nearly 2 million people would be killed instantly, over 800,000 people receiving third-degree burns, over 4.5 million people receiving second-degree burns, clothes catching on fire within 24 miles of the impact, and trees catching on fire within 51 miles of the point of impact. We are talking about a blaze 100 miles or about 160 kilometers in diameter. But we're only just getting started. We also need to talk about the pressure wave. That too is utterly devastating, killing quite a number of people who were lucky enough to survive the fireball. A 240 decibel shock wave killing over 150,000 people. Anyone within 18 miles receiving lung damage, 24 miles having ruptured eardrums, and 42 miles away the buildings collapse and then there's the winds just horrifying when we're talking about the force of these winds a catastrophically huge ef5 tornado is essentially what this amounts to and even more powerful if we're talking closer to the point of impact within 12 miles it's more powerful than the winds on jupiter within 20 miles all homes are swept from their foundations and within 36 miles it's like being inside an ef5 tornado think about that for a moment an ef5 tornado that's 72 miles 
miles in diameter. Over one and a half million people losing their lives from the winds, essentially everybody who survived the fire and the pressure wave. And then, of course, we also have an earthquake, 6.8 magnitude, which kills almost 4,000 people, a pathetically small number of people compared to the rest of the effects of this impact. Again, no matter where this thing hits, if this is a populated area, it's going to be devastating for the inhabitants. But a lot of you are probably saying, well, you're exaggerating. There are many areas of the earth that are not all that populated. Aren't we talking about a worst case scenario? Well, actually, we aren't. Because if Apophis were to hit an ocean instead of a populated area on land, the effects would be far more cataclysmic. The tsunami created by a four gigaton blast is difficult to predict in terms of just how horrible it might be. It really depends on where in the ocean that it hits, but anything within a few hundred kilometers of the point of impact would experience a massive wave up to 200 meters in height, the height of a 60-story building. Now keep in mind, the worst tsunami envelope that Sri Lanka experienced during the cataclysmic 2004 tsunami was just over 11 meters. And as you can see from this simulation, the entire west coast of the United States experiences at least that much of a tsunami, some parts of it being 70 to 80 percent worse than the Sri Lanka tsunami. The casualties and damage would be almost beyond comprehension. Okay, so ugly to say the least, but still, NASA tells us, and I agree with them to a degree anyway, that Apophis is not going to present any sort of threat. They have studied Apophis's trajectory and orbit quite thoroughly over the years, and at this point, given all of the gravitational factors, we know where Apophis is going to go, and even though it's going to come really close to Earth, as I said before, closer than any large asteroid has come to our planet in recorded history. This is a rare and amazing opportunity. And again, very strange that this is happening almost at the same time, just a few years different from the arrival of 3i Atlas, this strangely unique object. But nevertheless, it's not going to hit according to its current trajectory. So why be worried? Well, according to a recent peer-reviewed paper, even though the odds of 3i Atlas hitting the Earth are quite remote, they are not non-existent. And this paper explores what might happen if something unforeseen occurred with Apophis and put it back onto a collision course. The possibility of this nightmare scenario was examined by astronomer Paul Wiegert, and he did a very thorough job in August of 2024 with a peer-reviewed paper regarding not only potential impacts of Apophis with small asteroids, but also with close encounters that Apophis is scheduled to have with asteroids that we are not quite so certain in terms of where their orbit orbits are going to take them and how close they may actually come to Apophis. Although Paul Wiegert essentially ruled out the possibility of these objects actually hitting each other, there may be material carried along with these objects, perhaps small orbiting objects trapped by their gravity, something along those lines that might potentially hit Apophis during its journey through the solar system while we are unable to see it. Keep in mind that all of these close encounters that you're looking at right now, and again, there's a lot of uncertainty that we have with these other asteroids that are making close encounters with Apophis. In most of these cases, these close encounters are taking place in 2026. 
six when we are not going to be able to see Apophis. It is lost in the glare of the sun during that time frame. Interestingly enough, in the same way the three eye atlas was lost in the glare of the sun at the moment that it achieved perihelion. I'm not saying there's any connection between those two incidents, but it is rather interesting that both Apophis and Three Eye Atlas were out of our sight because of the sun at the same time. But as you can see, there's a number of close encounters that Apophis is experiencing with a number of smaller asteroids. And again, if these asteroids have smaller orbiting companions, as many asteroids do, it is not beyond the realm of possibility that one of these small impactors might hit Apophis while it's still two or three years away from its close approach with Earth and any minor change to Apophis's trajectory is going to lead to a very substantial change with its close approach, perhaps putting it on a collision course. Once again, I don't want to alarm anybody. Paul Wiegert emphasizes that the odds of a small impactor actually hitting Apophis and knocking it off its trajectory are about a million to one, and then that new trajectory being on a collision course with Earth being less than a billion to one. We're talking lottery winning odds here, but nevertheless, given the extreme and catastrophic consequences of Apophis actually colliding with our planet, should we really completely rule out the possibility of an impact? Is that really a responsible thing to do? Or should we make preparations for this unlikely event or perhaps another event with an asteroid that we have yet to detect that might be on a collision course a lot sooner than Apophis is? So once again, I must emphasize that the odds of Apophis actually hitting Earth are vanishingly small, but one of the points of concern is the fact that it is, like 3 Eye Atlas was for a brief amount of time, hidden from our view in the glare of the sun, and it's going to stay there until 2027. It's going to be rather difficult to come up with any sort of intercept plan in such a short amount of time if, come 2027, we discover that it's suddenly on a collision course. And there are other things that could crop up. For example, Kim Jong-un's insane regime in North Korea is slowly beginning to acquire a spacefaring capability as well. Not manned spaceflight, but still interplanetary probes and such may not be beyond their capability for very long. And if they were to launch something along these lines, an interceptor designed to shove 3 Eye Atlas on a collision course unless the world does what Kim Jong Un commands, like, for example, drop all the sanctions, or if we were thinking about toppling his regime, threaten to put 3 Eye Atlas onto a collision course, something along those lines. That is something that he could very easily do. Any nation with even a primitive spacefaring capability might have the capability of shoving a dangerous object on a collision course if they decided to become a terrorist regime. When it comes right down to it, given how cataclysmic an impact with an object like Apophis might be, it is in our interest to not only build up our ability to detect dangerous objects, but also to be ready at a moment's notice to deflect them. As of right now, we don't even have a replacement for the DART mission that occurred a few years ago that knocked an asteroid, a target asteroid, off of its trajectory. We don't have a replacement for that spacecraft even under construction or planned. It would be very difficult to suddenly build a replacement for DART that's capable of knocking Apophis off its course if, come 2027, we discover that it's suddenly on a trajectory that we did not anticipate. It is in the interest of everybody on this planet for us to come up with some sort of rapid response asteroid defense. It's not very expensive. We're talking perhaps a few hundred million dollars. 
compared to the immense amount of money that so many nations, especially the United States, spends on defense, seems to me that a few hundred million dollars to avert such a terrible catastrophe would be a hell of a good investment. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I'm going to be reopening the merch store sometime early next year. As you can see, we have an asteroid shirt here in 2029 kiss your asteroids goodbye if you're interested in this kind of merch keep your eye on the store all the information is in the description thanks again for watching and until next time stay angry about space